we've got folks here ready to go, so we'll get started. Um, Cheryl Ray Stout with WBEZ Radio. Cheryl, if you don't mind, uh, go ahead. Get our questions going. One, that the bowl season ended the way it has. And the other one would be, what are your thoughts about the new front office going forward? Hey, sure. I didn't get to hear the full part of the first question. Um, the how the Bulls are going, you know, obviously with the front off changes, um, I think it's good. I'm excited. Um, I think whenever you change something, it means that you're willing to put yourself out there and get better. So I'm all for it. I think everybody just wants to continue to get better and, and hopefully, you know, get this team to the of winning. So, um, you know, I'm very happy. But if you can repeat your first question. I wanted to know what what are your thoughts the fact that your regular season ended it's done and you're not going to be able to play competitively until December. Um, I mean it sucks. I mean you kind of you got to understand it. It's a weird time, especially with everything that's going on right now. But um, it's upsetting too. We you know we weren't even good enough to get to the playoff game, so uh, the play in game. So um, it's upsetting and it's uh. It just shows that we have to do a lot of things differently to to get ourselves that recognition to get to get to that spot. All right, Casey Johnson, next up, NBC Sports Chicago. Go ahead, Casey. So I'm not going to ask you to compare and contrast. I'm just kind of more interested on how you have. Uh, communicated with the new regime of Arturis and Mark Eversley. How have you found their approach? How have you found how they communicate with you? What's that experience been like since they've been hired? Been really good, actually. Um, obviously, you don't have any expectations going into, you know, something new. But as a player, it's always good to have them uh, reach out to you. And they did that, the, you know, the first day with Arturis reaching out to me. And I've had several conversations with them. Him just checking in, seeing how we're doing, having Zoom calls and text me and call me individually as well. Um, same with Mark. Mark gave me a text. I gave him a text back. And then uh, actually not too long ago, I was talking to him while he was playing golf. So it was uh, we've, had, we've had some uh, we've had some good good conversations already and looking forward to actually meeting him in person and, um, you know, getting this thing going. What are some of the things that they've talked to you about? A lot of it is just getting to know the team, um, our vibe of the team and things that was going on. Um, some of it was just general conversation, like how you're doing, what have you been doing in Seattle, how are things out there concerning, uh, you know, with corona and, um, you know, everything that's been going on outside of that. So it's been, uh, it's been good. Um, general conversation, um, workouts. How's the team? What's been going on with the team? Why this didn't work or why this worked? Things like that. So they've been, uh, you know, extremely involved. All right. Next up is Joe Cowley with the Sun-Times. Zach, how you doing, bud? What up, dog? You been playing some video games? Oh, yeah. What else is there? <laughs> Not a <Hey>. lot. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. Um you know, obviously, I know we've we've talked to you about Jim before, and you always say it's not your decision, and that's the, you know that's for the front office to decide. But let me phrase it this way: Do you has he done enough as a coach where you think he deserves a chance to come back and continue to coach you guys? Well, you know, I'm gonna keep the same stance I always have, Joe. You know, it's not for me to judge somebody. You know, I think he goes out there and does his best. I don't think anybody in the organization or the NBA goes out there and tries to fail. Um, you know, sometimes it's out of your power on, you know, your win-loss record or what happens during the game. So, I know for a fact he, he's tried and he's done his best, you know, and that's all you can ask for sometimes. So, as a player, I just go out there. I try to follow my, you know, follow the lead, go out there and do my job, um, you know, on decisions and things like that. I leave that up to higher management. That's not my role in the organization. So, you, I think you knew I was going to answer that correctly. <laughs> All right, next up is Eric Woodyard with ESPN.com. Hey, Zach, what's good, man? What up, dog? How you doing? Hey, Zach, what, what, you know, you guys it's going to be off for so long. By the time you look at the last game y'all played this year, the next year, that would be like almost 10 months, man. So, you know, yeah. two-part question, what's the plans to stay in sharp, you know, between that time? Because I'm sure you probably haven't, you know, outside of an injury or just hooping, you haven't set out that long. And what are the expectations moving forward for next season now that you got a front office and everything that, yeah, new, new, uh, newly in place. 
Man, uh, yeah, that ten that ten month is is going to be it's going to be a long 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 period of time. So you got to stay in shape. Obviously, I think I do a really good job of that. Even with what what happened in the decision of us not going to the uh, going to the little playing tournament in Orlando, that I was I was working out every day. I was working. I was waking up at nine o'clock, getting getting my lifts in, making sure my cardio is right. Obviously, you won't be in basketball shape, but I was going to get my workout in at the gym, shooting two hundred, three hundred shots a night. So. Um, you know, I was ready to hit the hit the hit the ground running, uh, pick right back up where I was. So, obviously, I think you have to have off season to let your body and your mind rest, um, just for you know injury prevention and just you know your own general wellness, and then pick it back up again. I'm glad that they gave us a start date at least to where we can figure out when to start going again and get back into shape or, or somewhat of shape. Um, and then the second part of the question, man. You, it's the same as it uh, has it's been. Um, you know, for me personally, I can't speak on other people. I'm just, I'm just ready to become a winning team and a winning player. You know, I've, it's my last, it's my sixth year, and you know, I still haven't, you know, got to the playoffs. Haven't played a, you know, if you want to put it in, you know, real terms, I haven't played a really meaningful basketball game. Um, you know, every game in the NBA is meaningful, but you know, once the playoffs come, that's when you compete for championships. So we have that had an opportunity to do that, I haven't. So I'm just continuing ready to, you know, progress my career and, and get better and, and try to reach that next step. Okay. Our, our next question comes from Jamal Collier with the Chicago Tribune. Hey, what's up, Zach? Uh, we've seen you, um, after just given all the, the protests and, and the things kind of going across the country, um, and we've seen you be one of the athletes that has tweeted about it and sort of spoke up about it. Um, sort of generally, I guess, what would have just been some of your, your thoughts and feelings that you've had over the past week or so and just kind of what, um, you know, I guess just what, what, what things have you guys been just kind of internalizing and, and thinking about uh, right now? Well, uh, just talking to a lot of people. Like, I think you guys know me. I talk to my, talk to my dad a lot. Um, you know, it's a weird situation. I think the thing that we came to is, this, you know, this has been going on for a long time. I think the, the video camera has shed light on a lot of things, what's been going on with the world and um, police and, you know, different things like that. But I think now that we're starting to get this platform and for all our athletes and entertainers to use our platform for good. Um, and I just want to continue to go out there and share that as well. You know, there's going to have to be some type of movement and, you know, maybe it might not be this generation, might be the next, but, um, you know, we it can't continue to be this way. Um, it's not right. So just just being on that stance and, and just being aware as well, educating myself. I spoke at a you know Seattle at a uh, like a really a little rally yesterday with a lot of pros, and um, you know, I just encourage them to go vote. You know, I haven't, you know, I can stick myself out there. I haven't voted before, and you know that's not doing my part in the community. So go out there and not just vote for, you know, presidency, but things in your own community as well. Cause you know, everything that you vote for can make a change and put those people who are in power to, to hear your voice and help make that change as well. So educating yourself, making sure that we're all together because um, what's going on isn't right. You had a lot of conversations with um, teammates and, and, and such some about maybe things that, Y'all could plan to do or plan to, you know, obviously not going to get back on the floor this season, potentially next season. Just what, uh, is who mostly have you been in contact with? We had a we had a Zoom call um, and just laid out how everybody's feelings were. We didn't really put a plan together, but just talked about certain things going on with the world, obviously giving someone, someone a safe space and um, people to talk to. Not everybody has somebody to talk to where they feel afraid to talk, so a safe space to talk in. I think moving forward, we're obviously going to do something. I think the league's going to do something. Um, but I think that's going to come at a time where we can get together and actually sit down and think of something that is, uh, you know, powerful. Yeah. Last one was a Zoom call organized by players. Say again? A Zoom call that y'all organized that players to get together or how? It was, uh, it was, I think it was, I think it was our players. Our players oh. put, been putting together Zoom calls and, um, Every uh, not every Friday, but it seems like it's been you know once every once every week, if not two weeks, we've really been on a Zoom call. So it's been really good. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right. Next up, Mike McGraw with the Daily Herald.
Hey, Zach, I, uh, I'm uh, curious. I don't know how much you've been talking to your teammates, but do you feel like there's a general feeling that you guys really wanted to go down to Orlando and keep playing? Did you tell our tourists, you know, fight for us and see if you can get, do whatever you can to get us down there or anything like that? Yeah, as basketball players, I think that's our job. We, we want to play. Um, I think the main concern was, and I think it still is a concern with the players that are going down there, that is it safe? Um, you know, people are in different situations where some have families, some, you know, obviously wives, girlfriends, different things like that. You know, I'm a big family person. I see my, my parents, my, my uh, now fiance every day. Um, so it's just concerning on if we do go down there, do we have to be quarantined from our family? What happens if somebody gets it? Can it, you know, can you bring it back and, and make sure that your family's all safe and your family come with you? So I think those are more of the general questions. It wasn't anything about basketball because that's the thing that we understand how to do. Um, you know, with COVID, that's unknown. So that's, I think, a lot of the questions we're about. All right. All right. Next question here is Darnell Mayberry with The Athletic. Hey, Zach, how are you? How you doing, man? Good. Uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, I just wanted to piggyback a little bit uh, on what Jamal was saying about some of the social injustices. Um, one, you, you've mentioned now a couple of times that you hadn't voted before. I'm curious to know why you hadn't voted and what you would tell other um, young people um, that could learn something from maybe what you've learned in that time. It just wasn't something that I was hip to. You know, obviously I know that you have the right to vote, but everybody doesn't have to. Um, and, you know, with with what's going on, I think it, it – matters a lot more now to at least to me because I think every single vote counts um before I wasn't educated at all on it. I'm trying to educate myself on it now on more of the, the politics and, and what goes on and how how things are voted in um so just taking action in my own community and, and trying to do my part is is the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward with that and what was the second part of the question just what, what you would tell the younger generation now from what you've learned? Oh, man, like, just, just educate yourself. Um, be active. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and be different either. Um, you know, go out there and, and, and try to make a change, even if, you know, you have an opinion and you're the only one in the, in the, in the room talking. Um, don't be afraid of that because I think now with what's going on is – everybody has a certain opinion and now that everybody's talking it's okay to have that opinion um you know if if something settles down you're the only one with an opinion i think it's a little bit harder for someone to speak up so you know don't feel don't don't feel scared about that and, and go out there and do what's right for you and then my second question zach is you did <clears throat> have a little bit of a controversial tweet the other day that you deleted and you know reposted i'm curious to know what or who led you to changing that tweet? Um, and, and how do you see it now? How'd you see it before and how'd you see it now? And what or, or who led to, to you changing that tweet? I actually didn't know it was tweeted out. Um, what I did was I made the Black Lives Matter hashtag and was also searching through the hashtags and accidentally clicked on one. So um, it was a mistake on my part. It had nothing to do with, you know, my stance or my view. I think I put myself out there to, have people understand what it was. Um, so that's all it was, was just a, a social media mistake. <laughs> okay, and then one last thing, Zach, you, you did talk in the park the other day about uh, your experiences being biracial. Um, what mm -hmm. could you share with the world at this time about, about your experiences? Um, you know, like I, I, I talked yesterday, like I said, at a, at a Seattle rally, I just wanted to, and this is just my opinion, man. You, I come from a household. My dad is black. My mom is white. Um, you know, and I've seen it on both sides to where, you know, people obviously look at my dad differently in situations. And even people of color look at my dad differently in situations because he was with a white woman. White men and white women look at my mom differently because she was with a black man. So 
you know, I just don't want this to become a race thing. You know, it's 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 terrible to say that, but growing up, you have to you have to know what's right and wrong, and you're taught that. So I was taught that it's okay because it's how I grew up. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to let people know, you know, it's on both sides, man. You got you got to go out there and, and as parents and as people who teach this younger generation, teach them the right thing. You know, everything right now is being, you know, so magnified that. You know, you could have a stance on one side or the other when really you need to just understand what's going on and not have a, I don't know how you could say, have a, have a racial bias. You know, we're all one. We're in this together. This affects everybody. So um, I think there's a lot of things that need to be changed. But um, if we come together, I think we can all do that. Thank you, Zach. Yep. All right. We've got Shaw raced out again with WBEZ Radio. Zach, when Zach, when you talk about the the protests that that you were involved with and you're seeing across the country, what do you take from that? What what are the positives and what are the negatives that you still see going across the United States? Well, the positives, some of the negatives. I think everybody has a voice right now, and we're bringing a big attention to it, to where we we have to be heard. Um, some of the negatives is. Obviously, there, there's a lot of frustration, not just the black community, but in a lot of communities where looting and things is going on. And, um, you know, you have to understand everybody's situation. For me personally, I don't I don't like looting and, and stealing. But if that's a way for people to vent and get their frustration out, you know, that's how it has to be. But it's not being portrayed that way. Um, so it's it, I feel like that's the that's a negative to where it's being portrayed as the, the black community is looting when. You know, that's just a way of frustration and getting things out, you know, and, and the black community isn't the only people looting. So, um, you know, the TV has their own narrative and they're going to share their own narrative. So we just have to be careful about that. Do you think the NBA as a whole supports the African-American community the way it, it should? Uh, yes, I do. And I think as as any corporation, you know, there's, there's always room for growth. Um, so I think, like I said, this is being so magnified and everybody's voice is being heard that it's hard not to hear us. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Okay, next question here is from Cody Westerman, 670thescore.com. Hey, Zach, um, thanks for hopping on this Zoom call. I had a question about next basketball season. It's going to be so far away at this point uh, for you guys, but just how much of a difference do you think new front office and management structure can help uplift you as a team, given that uh, with the salary cap and some of your big money contract for another year, uh, you'll probably have a lot of the same team, not a lot of cap space. So uh, given that the same team could come back in, in similar form, how much can a front office help up, uplift an organization? Um. You know, I think I think it's I think it starts with us as players. We're the ones on the court. Obviously, they're going to go out there and do their job and do the best they can and work their butt off. But we have to continue to go out there and grow as well. Um, we can't continue to make the same mistakes. We have to change our identity and how we're looked at as a team to become a winning culture. Um, you know, we had high expectations for this year coming into to the to the year, um, and, and it wasn't anything like that. I think we competed extremely well. I think we're one of the hardest playing teams in the NBA, but um, you know, you need that you need that W in your win column. So we gotta get better. Thank you. All right, we've got Casey Johnson again with NBC Sports Chicago. Zach, I know you got that suite set up there at your at your dad's place, parents' place outside of Seattle, but is there any has there anybody been any talk? internally from either our tourists or amongst teammates to maybe gather at some point, given how unprecedented, you know, long of an off season you guys are facing here in Chicago. I mean, Oh, um, I was like, man, I don't know if everybody's going to my house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're going to, you're going to invite everybody over to the compound. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be training camp up his ex house. Um, uh, I mean, obviously I think, I think we should, uh, we should come together, especially with this long off season, like you said, um, it's, 
it's going to be hard with, with conflicting schedules and where players live. Um, but I think we'll be able to get it done if we come to a little earlier return date or we have times where we're in groups, we, you know, we communicate as teammates to go up there and get some work in and, you know, things like that. But, uh, you know, I'm, at the end of the day, I know, I know I'll be ready. So. Thank you. Mike McGraw again with the Daily Herald here. Yeah, Zach, I just want to ask, uh, yeah, I saw pictures of that event in Seattle yesterday. It looked like Jamal Crawford was kind of uh, leading that thing. I was just kind of curious to your thoughts of how, what kind of, uh, you know, uh, what kind of leadership he showed there. I know some of us old guys remember Jamal from his Bulls days, so I was just curious uh, how that went. Jamal is the best, man. Um, it was actually Jamal and Will Conroy. Um, and we had a lot of NBA guys there, Isaiah Thomas, Nate Robinson, Brandon Roy, Spencer Haas, NFL guys like Cliff Abel. Um, I think Aaron Brooks was there. So it was a, it was a, it was a good good showing. Um, just wanted to go out there. It wasn't it wasn't a protest. It was more of a rally and talk to the younger generation. There's a lot of kids there, um, and just showing our support, letting them know that we're here with you, and you know how fast you organized it. This wasn't a or they organized it. this wasn't a you know a, a something that was that was thought of and then planned for you know weeks this was spur of the moment understand what's going on and they put something together i think within like six hours so the resources they came up with and the help they got has been great the turnout was and the, and the vibe of the whole thing was great hey bulls fans thanks for watching for more videos just check them out right here